from a uh, sad and disappointed Maryland Stadium. It's Wayne Mason and Bruce Posner. Maryland falls to UCF 38 to 10. Bruce, what did you see today? I saw one of the most disappointing efforts in a, in a while. I mean, I never, you know, Kasim Hill went down, and I, you know, I knew it was going to be tough. I kind of thought we were in big trouble right away, and it proved to be true. I mean, either Bordenschlager wasn't up to it or he wasn't ready, and it probably was a little bit of each. I'm sure he'll be better next week in Minnesota, but it's it's crisis time for the Terps. An early crisis, two and one. Mason, you've been studying this team. What did you see today? Disappointment all around. Maryland couldn't run the ball, which has been their biggest strength. They also couldn't throw the ball once Kasim came out of the game. I was surprised to see them coming out even when Kasim was in the game and just throwing the ball. They knew they didn't have it in the run today. They tried to throw it. It just didn't work. They had to throw it because he was even slow on the handoffs. Yeah, and he, all the plays were taking so long to develop. And they were almost like they knew what we were doing. They had an impressive defense. Here's a couple pictures of uh, Kasim getting uh, hit. Three people hit him. He gets hit in the side of the knee, and he's probably going to be out for a, a while. Nobody said anything. Well, a while is there's nine weeks left in the season, yeah. so I mean, it's, it's a while. So if it isn't Bortenschlager, Mason, who do you got? Well, Caleb Henderson did dress today to play. Also, you have Ryan Brand. He can also go if you need. It's going to be a tough experience no matter who's out there. Henderson hasn't played in a long time. Neither has Brand. So at this point, I guess you have to evaluate all options. Yeah, I, you know, it's probably going to be Borden Schlager. I mean, Caleb hasn't even practiced, has he? Nope, but he was out. He wears number eight. He was running around. Uh, Brand wears 16. He's a smaller guy. Mesa was impressed with him and his trip to practice this summer. So you have that. There was a quarterback problem. I think part two is it seemed like the UCF defense spent a good deal of the time in the Maryland backfield. My guys, my offensive line did not come through today. I'm going to make a statement. You guys tell me if I'm right or wrong. I can name them until my till I forget every one of them. Every quarterback we have gets hurt running. Isn't there a message there? Is that maybe we should go to drop back? Maybe our lines just aren't there yet. I mean, this is another guy who went down because he was running. Why did Pegrom go down? He was running. He but was that's running. His thing. Why did C.J. Brown go down three times? With Perry the Hills. I mean, Perry Hills. I mean, you go on and on and on. Right. All right, and it's always because we used and the first thing they did with Bordenschlager was run. So I mean, I know it's part of the offense, and they're but, sticking with it. But you can't. I mean, there comes a time when you have to say it's not working. Well, it worked for a couple weeks, but boy, it's not working today. The defense was in the game long enough that if we had any offense, it probably would have worked out. But we will talk about the defense and uh, heading to Minnesota when we come back after this message from Meyer Consulting. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Mason, Bruce, the defense actually was was pretty good today. It yeah. wasn't great. Well, they wilted eventually. They just were on the field so long. And the other quarterback, we knew, Milton McKenzie, we knew he was going to do well. He had some great plays that got him wide open. Mm -hmm. And he ran. And uh, he almost got hurt on that 50-yard run when they knocked him 15 feet out of bounds. Yeah. They I'm telling you that it's this thing with running the quarterback here. I, I think you got to take a long look at it. And, uh, you know. Look, everybody in college does it. You're supposed to have five guys who could play. We had two that could play, and they're both hurt at the moment. I was impressed with Jeremiah Carter at the end. Uh, number 25. Is it Brooks? Yeah, Antoine Brooks. Just really, this whole team was showing what they can do, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They kept this team in the game long enough that if it ever worked, Maryland would have ended up sending this game to overtime or winning it. And what? Well, you know it was amazing, Mason. I've seen a lot of TD drives in my life. I've never seen one that was aided by seven penalties. Yeah. Right? Well, we marched down the field on penalties. It was about 50 yards of penalties. Yeah, and listen, you know, in a weird way, DJ Moore had a decent game. Oh, that Mason, that catch. That catch was amazing. Borton Schlager sends another one, airmailed it, but 
DJ jumps up there. The deep back had no idea what to do. DJ catches it and he scores. On that drive, you say that, but on the first play, which was pass interference, DJ Moore would have scored. So he got it goes hand in hand. Maryland had two plays where they decided to commit penalties instead of giving up big plays. It all goes, you know, it's all even in the end. I tell you what, I feel sorry for DJ because he's got a lot of work to do. And now you got to go to Minnesota. And now, though, you're going to be a heavy, heavy under. Is this, What happened? Did we beat Texas a month ago? Yeah. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> it's hard you know to believe what, at this point. You know point. what that tells you? How well Terrell Pergrome played. All right? And, and Hills. And, and Hill. Kasim Hill. Kasim Hill. Terrell Pergrome put us in the position to win the game, and Kasim Hill closed the deal. Uh, but he was great that day. He was great. Uh, going to Texas was still a blast. Uh, disappointed. Hey, a, a shock disappointment never today. As bad. Look, you're never as bad as you are when you, that you look when you lose. We're not as bad as we were today. I don't think. It, it's not over yet. There's been no verdict on Kasim Hill. I would just like to make that statement because these two make it sound like this whole thing is over. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it's not. You can go and win next week. Minnesota's not unbeatable. Right, here's a question for both of you. Can you win with Max Bordenschlager, a quarterback? Maybe Rutgers, but the way that he played today, there's no way that they're beating anybody other than Rutgers. You get the timing down. You work out the problems. Walt Bell's a smart guy. This team isn't going to quit on anybody. No. Maybe it's possible. The Maryland band start up, which means it's time for the press conference. We're going to go downstairs and see what DJ Durkin has to say. The Terps fall 30 Keep the faith, today. everybody, and remember, in the nest tomorrow at 8 a.m. and Wayne Mason myself will be at the prostate cancer walk and we're going to get a chance to meet live Earl the Pearl Monroe. That's that all Mason's going to look at some film tonight. Uh, he'll watch 70 hours of film tonight. Catch our shows on 1300 CBS Sports Radio, WJZ AM in Baltimore. We'll see you at the press conference.